redesigned the uh, front landing gear for the A6. Uh, a couple of components. This is the top view. This is a reinforcing uh, plate which goes on the back later on. Same with these. These go in and uh, this just gives you more glue area to hold it in. So the servo has a little tray here which is totally removable. There's four screws. Right now I've just got it taped up. Uh, there's blind nuts on top, double layer of ply, and this is the uh, this is the inside. This is the way it works. So let's hook it up, and we'll give you a quick demo. Okay, power's on. So this is going to be upside down. So that's the bottom of the fuse lodge. It fits in like this. I'll show you that in a later video when it's all installed and uh, it retracts like this. I've got a custom made uh, servo arm here. I'll uh, show you how that's done. So it's actually 3D printed, it's solid, uh, no fill, and uh, this is what it looks like. So it's a regular servo arm underneath. Uh, it gets glued and screwed in. Then it just simply goes on. A screw goes in here. And as you can see here, it just basically goes like that. So it just swings. Uh, let's see. So now, uh, now we've got the gear down. I'll show you how the pull-pull uh, works. But that's how it works. So what's going to happen is when I put the uh, retract down again, just swap out the wires here. Uh, if we want to retract it, we've got these uh, collets on here and here, and uh, we, they just slip through. So you can see them moving here. And uh, that's it. It's a super, super reliable uh, system. Uh, one thing you do want to do is uh, set the transmitter up so then it's when it's retracting that you disable the steering servo. Uh, it can move somewhat, but you don't want it, you know, stressing and straining and so forth. So that's why I do it. Right now, I've obviously not got everything lined up. It's not all calibrated and set in place, but I just wanted to show you. So basically, I've just assembled this so it's ready for installation into the fuselage. All right, so I've cut out the uh, landing gear bay uh, door. I've left this uh, section here on because when the gear comes down, I'm going to basically hollow a chunk out of here which will hold the uh, landing gear laterally so if you have a you know a side slip landing crosswind landing um, it helps to stabilize the gear so let's see all right it fits good so the way it goes is uh, your push rod goes into the steering gun i'll try and get this other one in Keeping everything in the camera, which is not the easiest thing. There we go. And then uh, we'll just put it in place. And then pop a couple of screws in. Just get it in. There we go. Everything's supposed to self-align. It's just that I'm trying to uh, video this in a very, very tight spot. So it's not the easiest thing. I'm just using the uh, X-Type uh, servo screws to mount this. It's perfectly strong. And when I first did this, uh, <laughs> it was so difficult to get the... the uh, steering arm and the uh, push rods to go in so what I did I redesigned the uh, 
the servo arm there so that it was uh, reversed. And the way you calibrate this is to simply have the gear extended down into the steering position, which it is now. And then you just simply run these collets up. Let me just make sure I got it straight. You just run these collets right to the edge of the steering arm like that. And then put them in. Now I'm got some new collets on order and they're much better than these and then i'll double collet them and then i'll put just a tiny bit of shoe goo on the uh, edge on the back there and that will uh, just be a fail safe just in case anything goes wrong so now we've got a steering arm as you can see it's uh, nice and tight and when it retracts which we'll show you in another video we'll show you these going back and everything and uh, it retracts like this okay so now i'm uh, attaching the cowl so we've got the front firewall which is the also the battery holder and everything so i made a template using uh, just cardboard laser cut and then uh, switched to uh, plywood so i have the uh, nose plate you can see these uh, these magnets have got little holes in them so you can screw them in and then this fits right over it like this these also become the alignment holes for the cowl this is the uh, uh this is the um fuel probe underneath there's a little uh bit of framing which goes in this comes down clicks in like that this is just a cut off it's just a test piece to get the angles right and then there's a screw that goes through two plates and uh, that's what locks the fuel probe in so uh, we've now got the cowl uh, frame set up so i need to put some magnets in and these are gonna be two things they're gonna line up the cowl plus they're gonna hold it Oops, oh, that was a good trick. And uh, these get glued on now. So I have these little retaining rings. These go on the outside of the magnets. They'll be glued on. And then I'm going to glue a back piece, which is just to make sure the magnet doesn't go anywhere. Oh, actually, you'll probably be able to go without it. You can always put these on after the fact. So uh, let's uh, glue these babies in. So what I want is basically a self-aligning cowl. All right, so we've got the uh, magnets all glued in. And uh, the intent is this is all prominent here. This is the second plate. So what I want to do is I'm going to glue the cowl, or the nose, I should say, whichever you want to call it. Glue it like that, and it's pretty much lined up. It's as good as it's going to get. For this model anyhow and then uh, what i want to do is glue these on so i'm going to tape it on tack glue from the back and then i can get some uh, shoe goo in there i don't want to risk putting shoe goo on the outside because it's going to capture on the front uh, on the back plate so it'll cause a problem so i've got the uh, cowl taped on there now so what i'm going to do is just sneak in behind that cowl frame i'm going to try and just get some uh, ca in there try and spot it in various places and then we'll uh, put a fillet of uh, shoe goo all around the inside and that will secure it all okay guys so this is the way it goes <clears throat> uh there's going to be a fuel probe like this uh it's this one's a bit too long i didn't do it right the last time 
So uh, I'm going to 3D print one. And then this is the way it goes. There's a hole here. There's holes on the sides here. And this goes in. Because I want it detachable in case you have a problem. Pop a screw through there. It locks it in. The fuel probe will just sit like this. And everybody's happy. Then, the, this is the uh, frame. These magnets are permanently screwed and glued in. Uh, I forgot to put my lightning holes in. But I can uh, drill those after the fact. Uh, I will add them to the design file. This... Now, as uh, corresponding uh, magnets, which are embedded in, you saw them on the other side. I've just got a temporary uh, uh, CA to hold it all in. And the way it works is this, is, boom. It's all in, nice and strong. And uh, it just needs to be cleaned up and painted and all the rest of it, and all will be good. It's a little tough to get off because the model's just not on the ground right now. And you pull it from the bottom and off it comes. So the way I was going to do it was to have uh, one eighth dowels going through the magnets into the back plate here. Then the magnets glued on and so they'd be like pins. And then I'd have holes here with the magnets and then everything would go in. Then it occurred to me that these uh, magnets are protruding uh, by about three millimeters. So why not just cut the corresponding holes, set the magnet back, and uh, that's all she wrote, and it works great. So that's one method of uh, mounting a cowl. Okay, I'm going to try and show you uh, how the battery tray goes in. This is the battery tray. Uh, it's hard to, to get the camera adjusted here so you can see inside. So anyhow, the battery tray has this long tongue on it, as you can see. And you'll see what I'm going to do with that in a moment. It's going to go and fit into this slot. Butts up like that, gets screwed down here and here, but here it's locked in. Now, try and adjust this for you. As you can see, there is a gap here on top. That is because this is going to have the receiver, the uh, backup beck, and also, uh, no, it's going to have two becks on it, I should say, plus our fail-safe system, all mounted here. The ESCs will go on the sides, here and here, and then they'll all just run right into the uh, along the bottom of the plane right into the uh, edfs as far as for the esc motor drives uh the reason i put this slot here so it's, it's like an offset slot is because there'll be velcro holding all these electronics down and if i need to get this out to service the uh steering and servo and what have you i can now move this out because this is a slide in and the velcro will go underneath like this so i thought of that at the last moment and thank god i did because otherwise we'd have velcro which we would not be able to get this out with and then uh don't know what i showed you but there's a, a mount here and it's a simple matter of just putting uh servo mounting screws to hold the battery slider in but i do need a flex drive for this so let's get that in all right and it's just a matter of popping three screws in like this so i'll just go one two and three i'm not going to put these uh in right now then we have the uh slider tray this uh has a little cam it comes down like this locks into these positions here so you've got three positions which is almost four inches of uh, cg just with your batteries and the way that works it simply comes in push forward and lock now it can't come out and uh, the batteries are permanently mounted to these trays so uh, it's rapid fast charging and uh works great 
adds uh, a fraction of an ounce, maybe, I guess, uh, maybe one ounce more to do it this way. But it's well worth it for ease of uh, serviceability and putting your batteries in. All right, there, this is how it all looks now. So we've got the gear. We've got the uh, mounting flange, which is this thing. This holds the slider down. Uh, as you saw before, it locks into this position here. We've got the gap for the Velcro. Now you might notice that there's a little angle here. That's because I guess when I did this plane, I was a little off underneath on the intake. So I had to adjust. Otherwise, there was a twist in the uh, battery compartment here. And you need this to be really flat for the uh, sliding battery tray. Uh, here you can see the mount fully installed now for the uh, fuel probe. And then as we come up, give you a bird's eye view of it all. There's the uh, fuel probe mount. And this is how it all goes in. So normally, you know, a lot of times your steering servo down here would not be accessible. As I've shown you, it's fully accessible, fully serviceable. You know, it's like two minutes to take this battery tray out, slide it out. And then uh, you saw me how I uh, took out the servo tray itself. And I could replace the servo, pop it back in. Downtime, maybe 10 minutes at the, f at the field, providing you've got your tools with you, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, everything's uh, set up now, ready to go. So I think we can start moving on with this plane and start putting things in permanently.